Uh, we want to take some time to talk about an astonishing auction that recently took place of horse racing memorabilia. It was all related to the legendary Sea Biscuit. It took place on January 20th uh, amongst the items that were auctioned, horseshoes that uh, he wore against his famed match race against War Admiral. But the highlight was a saddle used aboard Sea Biscuit. The auction company was Leland's, and joining us now is the chairman of Leland's. That is Joshua Evans. Mr. Evans, thanks for taking time to talk about this auction. Oh, yes, and I wanted to wish you all a very happy New Year's Day, or any Eve as well. <laughs> <laughs> See? He makes the distinction. <laughs> um, first of all, uh, tell us uh, about the auction itself, how the items came to you, and uh, everything that was offered. Well, there was a gentleman by the name of Chris Lowe, who's very well known in the racing community as a collector, and he kind of went around in the last several years and just bought up pretty much everything related to Seabiscuit and got some incredible stuff. And he actually bought a lot of it from us. And then when it came time that he was, you know, done with it, he, uh, he came to us and, and we auctioned it off for him. And the results were just tremendous. It really just shocked us all. I mean, I mean the, the big ticket item, of course, was Red Pollard's Seabiscuit saddle. Uh, I believe it went for just over $100,000. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Was that expected did you, or, or did that eclipse what, what uh, you guys were expecting? Well, we were really happy with it. I mean, 100000 for anything is great. Um, and actually, we sold him the saddle uh, some years ago during the whole, the height of the Seabiscuit thing, you know, after the Hillebrand book came out and, and the film. And I think he paid about 50000 So he kind of, you know, he doubled his money, less commission. Yeah, sort of pinhooked the saddle a little bit. And we showed the shoes. After we get off the shoes, the shoes that were in the match race, they went for a little bit over 30000 Joshua, was this a surprise as well? That was really great. We were really happy with that number, and it was so good that actually we got a call from a woman in the States who has another one of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, the shoes from the Santa Anita uh, race, which is the other you know, big race in Seabiscuit's career, and we were able to, to obtain that. We're actually putting together another auction uh, for the summer, and we've had a lot of people call with amazing stuff all over the country. Do you, do you specialize in, in horse racing memorabilia, or is this just, just part of the profile of, of many things that you auction off? We sell mostly, we sell sports, pretty much. Sports right. is our thing. And there really is no big player in the horse racing field that specializes in just that. But we've been doing a, a lot of it uh, for the last few years, uh, you know, here and there. But now it's become much more of an emphasis. And the, the big change has been there's huge international buyers that are coming over and buying things for big money where, uh, you know, the money doesn't, just doesn't seem to mean as much to them. And that's the big change. Josh, you know, in our sport, it really depends. Uh, in the case of Seabiscuit, his story reemerged, as you said, because of Lauren Hillenbrand's novel and then the movie that followed up, which became very popular. So then Seabiscuit items become popular. It's very different, unlike, say, baseball, where you're looking for a particular card. And we just heard about the treasure trove uh, that just took place of cards that were revealed and recently sold uh, uh, as, a, as a unit for over a million dollars. Is there something out there, though, in the world of horse racing that is sought after that that if anyone comes upon could be very, very valuable? Well, if anyone out there has anything great from Secretariat, that's the real, that's the ticket, because that's something like uh, Seabiscuit that transcends the field. Um, and if you had, like, let's say, Seabiscuit, uh, I'm sorry, Secretariat Saddle or the Triple Crown Trophy, things like that, that's the holy grail. Josh, thank you so much for taking time to talk about this uh, historic auction as it relates to horse racing. And again, if anyone wants to see some of the items that are up for bids from Leland's, you can go to Leland's.com. They do a fantastic job, and uh, this was a remarkable moment for those who love horse racing. Joshua Evans with us, the chairman of Leland's. Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. I really enjoyed it. And, and uh, I, I'm with you guys. Uh, look, the saddle's one thing for $100,000, but then those shoes. That's a lot of money for yeah. those yeah. shoes. <laughs> you got to understand, right. I mean, I grew up in the baseball car business. I grew up in, in the business as a kid collecting memorabilia. So I have a very, very big collection when it comes to my jerseys as well and, and a lot of oddball stuff, um, too. And when Todd asked that question about the Holy Grail, horse racing really doesn't have it. When you go to baseball cards, um, you have the T209, the tobacco cards with yeah, Ty Cobb. Right. That was yeah, sort of like yeah. the Holy Grail. And I remember when those went for auction, it was like millions and millions. Charlie Sheen, I know, is a, is a huge collector, has a giant 
collection. But when it comes to horse racing, I would think this has got to be one of the biggest sales of a horse race, uh, I guess, I don't know what you call it, a product or a saddle or a helmet. I mean, that's a pretty cool saddle to have something like that. And it was on the back of Seabiscuit. And you heard he bought it for 50000 from them and turned it around for... Yeah. For 104,000, so double. So what his was money. sold in that lot of baseball cards? Were they old tobacco so, cards? So yeah, they were the tobacco. Yeah, it's funny that. you said that because those were the tobacco. They're hard cards. to find. Yeah, if you follow uh, baseball card collecting, there was I think it was about the third generation that it was passed down. But basically, the great grandfather had collected. He had smoked for a while on the back of these cigarettes were these baseball cards. So he just kept them, thinking that one day they might be worth something. They turned out to be very, very valuable. So it was a trove, and they're called like the Vermont Trove. And so it was a whole series of them. And all together, they brought about $1.3 million in for the family who decided Jeez. to uh, finally sell them. It's crazy. Yeah. Right. So. My dad had a uh, Sandy Koufax, I'll never forget, was in the back of Bell Bread. <laughs> right, and we looked it up. I forget what it was about. Maybe about a month ago, it was like fourteen hundred dollars. It was a Bell Bread Sandy Koufax card, but a lot of that stuff got thrown away, destroyed. And when you were younger, my father said you used to put it in the spokes of your your, your bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's right. why they got ruined. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know at the time what it might turn yeah. out to be.